hello everybody. Thank you really for letting me do this research and do this uh, report because that's my uh, not even first, but like second or third uh, report in the European University in, uh, in Saint Petersburg. But I'm from high school economics in Moscow, and um, actually this report is a very very. A tiny and detailed part of overall research of uh, Russian protest uh, of the previous two years, uh, which I um, somehow do with my colleague from Indiana University in Bloomington, Regina Smith. Uh, but this part of, of this very report is concerned with um, the effect of Russian political protest on political engagement in uh, Russian society. So I have micro-level data uh, and that will be kind of combinated research between qualitative and quantitative analysis, but uh, it would be more quantitative than qualitative then, so sorry if again something would be weird or perhaps not very clear for you, I will try to explain it very, very concretely. Uh, so my idea is to explain how the very protest activity, how the very protest events, uh, protest of pro-government rallies, so I mean both anti-Putin and pro-Putin rallies, uh, how did they impact the political engagement, uh, by which I mean the awareness of in politics, uh, uh, commitment in participation in politics, and uh, hypothesis is again intuitively uh, easier to understand that protest participation should somehow increase engagement because people start to protest and you suddenly uh, you begin to realize that something is going uh, everywhere uh, people start speaking about politics so people start to be aware of politics in at a large extent after the protest started but my thesis is that uh, the very linkage I'm sorry if there is a tell telephone here. Yeah. Uh, my thesis is that the very linkage between the political protest and politics uh, awareness uh, engagement is not very clear and the linkage is back because uh, that will be the very result of the research. Um, first of all, uh, protest participation increases engagement for only those people who were engaged somehow politically before. So, uh, if these people, they, and they were not very much connected with politics, they were, for example, just civil activists, we do not see any clear links between their uh, pre-election and post-election activities. So, you uh, need to be included to the political networks before the protest, to be included then and to be then more, more aware of uh, politics. And uh, another thesis is connected very closely to this literature that we've just discussed before, it's the literature on uh, electoral authoritarian and competitive authoritarian regime. Uh, and we see, according to our data, that this linkage between protest participation and engagement uh, it is very clearly seen only during electoral cycle. So it is a kind of, of course, latent, uh, uh, again, latent data about Russian political regime type. Uh, here, I, I, I suppose that Russia is electoral authoritarian regime, not competitive authoritarian regime, and uh, data somehow, again, proves uh, my suggestion. Uh, here is a distribution of attendees, of people who were presented like physically by, by their bodies uh, at rallies and protests uh, during actually all the electoral cycle uh, State Duma plus presidential elections. Uh, I think it's quite clear that you see the waves were parallel. Uh, so it all started with, of course, anti-government protests, and you all, of course, are aware of that. Uh, and then pro-government trend, uh, which is the second line, it was like a doubling the anti-government trend. Uh, of course, it was a little bit weird for their independent observer, but still we understand that most of the uh, pro-government rallies, they were organized and mobilized uh, 
Fourthly, and I've discussed it uh, previously with our data, it, it, it is actually proved by our data that uh, government rallies, that rallies for Putin, I mean, directly, they were organized and they were organized uh, in a fourth way. Uh, it was not just the very decision of people to come to these rallies. And it is very clearly, it is very clearly seen in this very graphic. Uh, so the research problem here, uh, again, is about the explanation how and what was the effect of political protest in Russia on the further political engagement of people. Uh, and we are interested now in two categories of people. First of all, in so-called casual activists. So they are not uh, frequent, uh, full-time activists who really perceive their activism as their full-time job, but just ordinary people who just want to be presented somehow uh, in the protest movement. So we call them casual activists. And I will clarify all these terms later. And so-called neutral people, so people who who uh, perhaps somehow have some political feelings, uh, some political attitudes, but still they, uh, for some reasons, do not want to participate in this very opposition movement. Um, so we call them neutral in terms of they are not, because they are not presented in the very rallies. Um, but for, for data for today uh, will be concerned only with casual activists, because we have, again, different kinds of data and I just don't want to mix this data uh, a lot. So if you have any questions about, for example, neutral group, I am happy to uh, discuss uh, them with you later, perhaps. Uh, so we, we see that a um, significant part of people, they actually dropped out from the protest movement after the very, uh, the very peak and the very uh, zeal of the protest in, uh, in, in the uh, early spring of uh, 2012. And uh, after the presidential elections, the level of activist recruitment uh, was really very low. And we see that uh, according to our data, we have some panel data, which means that we track the same people in the same situations on the rallies. We see that lots of people decide not to participate in the protest elections, uh, sorry, in the protest uh, movement and in the protest uh, rallies. Uh, and it's very important to explain why do these people refuse to participate and to continue to their participation uh, despite uh, protest movement actually had some uh, concrete and significant success, uh, especially comparing with uh, protest activities uh, during the previous years. So why political engagement? Why not, for example, political participation or something like that? Uh, under political engagement we mean the very committed participation in rallies uh, or activism. What does it mean committed? It means that a person participates uh, a lot of times. Like, it is a very frequent and usual and ordinary participation for him. Like, uh, in our data, we have so-called core and periphery. So, core of protest are those people who participate more than three times in the protest activities. Uh, and those people who partic participate, for example, one or two times, they are just like casual protesters, their periphery. Uh, and political engagement help us to somehow track the level of political awareness. How do people are informed about politics? How do people inform about uh, goals of protest, about principles of protest and so on? And I will describe you data later about that. Uh, why is it actually important? Uh, we all remember about Inglehart's uh, and Welser's presupposition about the very the very fact of the engagement in public politics on the democratization level and the very stability of democratization. So um, the, the, the more is engagement, the better is democracy rootedness. So dem democracy becomes more stable because it, ha it has uh, more people in the core uh, people of uh, democracy demand. Uh, and the rise of political engagement bolsters, of course, the fact of democratization. So we are, much, we are very much interested in what's going on in Russia uh, in, in this point. Uh, so uh, according to the literature, does political protest cause the rise of engagement? Uh, on the one hand, yes. On the other hand, no. Why yes? Uh, first of all, Timur Koran uh, showed us that like, public preferences they can significantly change after the political protest started. Uh, why so? Because uh, privately we, we know some truths, yeah, and uh, publicly we always lie. Uh, and when we see that 
a, a, a lot of people around us, they also, for example, are, are opposite for the regime. Uh, it is much easier to us to again join the opposition movement. Uh, another argument for for the very uh, defense of this linkage between political engagement and uh, protest is that mobilization itself has a demonstrational effect. So the more you mobilize the people, the more other people again decide to uh, to somehow join this very movement. So it's quite clear, and I think uh, it, it's it's not worth to be discussed in such details. Uh, but we have some alternative explanations. Uh, the first explanation is uh, from uh, so-called uh, electoral author authoritarian regime literature uh, by again Levitsky and Way and Shelter for uh, like the, uh, their counterpart. Uh, is about the protest has another logic of development. We need to analyze protest in cycles, not in the very individual level mobilization. So protest, it is not about the linear trend, like we started the protest and then we can even uh, uh, whether rise or fall. Uh, but the protest is a very cycle process and it is embedded in cycles and we need to analyze the cycles. So it's kind of an alternative explanations to this idea of uh, political protest uh, causality with um, political engagement. Uh, according to, I just summed up some uh, theories about the very influence and weights of influence on um, pol political engagement of different factors of individual level. Uh, and we see that according to the literature and according to another research, uh, we have some strong predictors of uh, political engagement and weak predictors of political engagement. And this is very interesting and I really think it worth your attention, this very third column about the collective action experience. Uh, and we see that uh, just very simple, even community voluntarism uh, does not necessarily have a clear impact on political mobilization. So you can, of course, be concerned with your very small house problems or community problems, but you need to make very clear step uh, to make it to frame it as a political protest, to frame it as a political activity. Uh, and according to some like statistical results in different countries, uh, both industrial or post-industrial countries, we usually see that there is no any clear proved linkage between uh, voluntarism and experience in collective actions and um, political mobilization. Uh, on the other hand, we uh, have any very, very strong empirical evidence that uh, if you are organized in minorities or if you have any previous political protest experience, uh, you remain aware of politics and you remain engaged to the politics even if the protest declines. Uh, so we are uh, very much interested in this column and we are interested in column about socialization because according to our very brief and draft results uh, about our protest data, we see a very uh, high impact of higher education and very high impact of our uh, humanitarian experience, so-called. So I mean the very specific type of higher education which is connected directly with the political awareness, like sociological, political science education. And so we have a lot of people in our sample uh, who were graduates of uh, their humanitarian liberal arts departments. Uh, and uh, literature on differential participation shows to us the, that the persons who uh, are mostly aware of politics and who are mostly engaged uh, to politics Politics. They are mostly people without families, people without children, people with higher education. Those are people who can, of course, uh, spend some time of their private life to, uh, to protest or just to be even uh, aware uh, of politics or be engaged in politics. Uh, and as explanations, they are somehow connected with values and uh, I actually, uh, well, uh, uh, I, I'm not very much, uh, I'm not a big fan of using the explanations like that because uh, it is very hard to clarify them in our data because as Artyom Maguna already uh, mentioned, uh, in our data for example if you uh, if you're talking with people about their values, they all call themselves Democrats. And it is very hard to distinguish between the very sovereign democra democracy in their mind and like liberal democracy. Uh, and even if you s try to clarify uh, and to find out another questions, they always try to explain themselves uh, in the very liberal terms to present uh, for interview uh, the, their best side of their personality. So it's hard a little bit and I, I will skip it in our, uh, in our data. Uh, we have both quantitative and qualitative data. Uh, quantitative data was uh, it was collected 
directly on the very rallies. So we were with our team during <laughs> all the rallies from December 2011 to March 2012 on the very rallies, on all the Služniki, on Big White Circle, on Maneshka, on Balotna, on Pushkinska. So all the squares which were uh, connected with protest activities, uh, we were trying to interview people. And we have uh, 800 protesters, 800 interviews, with uh, one half is about uh, opposition interviews and another half is about pro-Putin um, people from Luzhniki, for example, or something like that. Uh, and we have a so-called control group uh, for, for another type of data, it's like for regression analysis. We have 300 of absolutely neutral people, so people who are absolutely not about politics at all. They even do not know that there were any protests in Russia, so they live very calm and private life and they are not interested and political activities at all. Uh, then we had very in-depth, very biographical interviews with uh, former political activists because we were interested in the rationale which lies uh, beyond the, the decision not to participate uh, anymore in the very protest. And uh, 21 in-depth interviews with full-time political activists, so people who um, developed themselves and who decided to improve their political skills by being full-time political activists, not just the very common casual participant. Uh, and also we have like five focus groups with neutral people again uh, because we were interested in the logic of being neutral, of being not politically aware, of being isolated from politics uh, like um, consciously by, by their own mind. Uh, and the time is very important in case we are talking about the cycles of political protest. Uh, we were trying to get the data in both uh, cases in, in, during the decline of protest activity and during the increase of protest activity. So you understand how it's really important to check uh, how the, their answers are dependent on the very cycle of protest. So first of all, some very brief biographical characteristics to speak with you about so-called socialization factor of being politically aware. First of all, you see that uh, who are stalwarts? Yes, stalwarts are our core participants, participants who participate more than three times in uh, any protest activities. And casuals, uh, they are not so frequent uh, guests uh, in protest rallies. Uh, place of residence, you see that m most of them are from Moscow uh, or Moscow Oblast. And the, the, the people who are casual participants, they are from Moscow Oblast mostly. Uh, you see that um, the, 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 very, uh, the Moscow Oblast is presented much more uh, frequently in their category. Sorry, oh, thank you. Um, Oh, I'm sorry about the time. Yeah, uh, this uh, situation with sector of work is very important because you see that uh, there is a clear dominance of private sector. Uh, we're all talking about oppositional rallies now, yeah? Uh, the employment is uh, about, of course, being employed or being student. And uh, dominance of male gender, as always, uh, uh, in the meetings like that. Uh, and what what is here is very important it is about the uh, connection uh, actually that is a table uh, which uh, includes only uh, those factors who were significant uh, in our analysis and uh, the most significant factors were actually the um, awareness in politicized internet networks so being presented in for example Facebook or reading some internet blogs which are directly connected with political activities and so on and personal protest networks so whether the person has that before the protest, some people who were somehow included to protest movement. If the person was uh, had no any type of people, uh, or he was included to any collective action, but except of political collective action, this uh, person, um, the people like this, they were not presented uh, on the protest at such an extent as the people who had such a, uh, such a friends or peers. Um, these are about the goals of anti-government protest, uh, for, again, for core and periphery, for stalwarts and casuals. Um, here actually it is not very much important uh, in terms of our talk, but here we see again uh, that people from the core of movement, they much more aware of the goal of the movement, of course, and uh, periphery, uh, they're not so much aware of what is going on and what, what are they talking about, what do they claim uh, and who, whom do they blame. Uh, actually that's, uh, uh, I have, sorry, have no time, uh, that, that's interesting, um, the difference between pro-government and, and 
anti-government rallies and um, our argument about the uh, mobilization of people on the pro-Putin and anti-Putin movement. Uh, you see that uh, for pro-government rallies, uh, we see um, slightly equal participation for, uh, I, I understand that the table is quite a little bit uh, un in understandable, but I will explain it. Uh, it means here that um, in any type time of protest, in any event, in any protest event, you have a fairly equal type of newcomers of newly comers. It means that you like have uh, constant mobilization on pro-Putin activities. And here is the, uh, the data for anti-government rallies. And you see the, the difference is very clear. For anti-government rallies, we had one clear core, clear cascade uh, of people who were mobilized uh, on, during the first wave of protest, and then that was the same people who were mobilized during the second uh, uh, wave of protest. So we had no any uh, really like new people, newcomers during the second and the third waves of uh, anti-government rallies. It means that uh, anti-Putin movement has a clear problem with mobilizing new people to their core, not their periphery, but their, their very core of the movement. Uh, and here is. Um, Something is, yeah. Uh, some conclusions and results, of course, yeah. Uh, according to our analysis, we see that uh, the factors that really matter for being always aware of politics, of being constantly engaged to the political matters, are uh, factors connected very much, very closely with uh, networks, uh, with relevant groups who are aware of politics. So uh, if you have any politically biased networks, you have any past political activity, or you re realize very concretely the movement goals, so you will be presented on uh, first, second, uh, third, and other waves of uh, political protest. If you do not have any politically uh, connected networks, that means that perhaps uh, you will not, you will be excluded. You you will be somehow isolated by the uh, from the protest. Uh, here are some citations uh, which I really wanted to show you, perhaps in in, in more extent, but still. Um, most of our activists who decided to participate. Uh, to continue to participate in political protest, they are people from very much active political networks. I'm um, yes, I'm absolutely uh, finishing that. Uh, and they were protesting since their early childhood, and that's a very common narrative for all the political activists that they they had previous protest experience before the protest started. Actually, uh, you see that started political activity in 2001, and since my early childhood, uh, and so on. So the conclusion is like last two slides. Uh, you see that first of all, we have very clear differences between the mobilization mechanisms of pro and anti-Putin participants uh, and that uh, anti-Putin participants they are real political movement and this movement of course suffers from very common problems of all political movements is to mobilize people again and again after the, uh, the very protest collapsed um, and the very mobilization is based uh, not only on the values but it is based on the networks and uh, especially political networks of these people. Uh, it means means that um actually uh, protest experience can, uh, th that was actually in, in our data, but I have no time to speak about it uh, in more details. Protest experience can distract people from participation. Uh, they can be somehow disappointed by the protest experience and refuse to participate more. Uh, and only core of protest rem remained engaged because they, uh, they are situated in these political networks. And that means that perhaps the only way to counteract this uh, problems with mobilization of, uh, to political protest is that frame everything as political stuff. So uh, to frame any collective action as political action uh, and thus try to include people more and more um, to the political networks, not just a collective action uh, networks. Uh, so that's all and I'm ready to discuss with you that in details. Okay, yeah, thank you very much.